Hello everybody, you're watching CodeZonk, and we're going to play with Daisy the Dinosaur again. I'm going to go ahead and bring that app up, and if you watched my last video, then you saw what it was like to set up the app. This is an iPad app, and we went ahead and we did the challenge mode. The challenge mode was all about following the exercise and learning some of the basics of coding. But today what we're going to do is we're going to do the free play mode. So to get there, you select this button instead. So let me just go ahead and explain to you what it is. This is going to look very similar to what you saw the last time. Over here are the commands. And what I want to do is I want to highlight just this area here because this is where you're going to need to move your finger so that you can scroll up and down and see all of the different things you have. There's not a ton of them, but there's a few. So you want to just kind of very carefully scroll your finger there so that you can see your full list. Over here is your program. In this section, the items that you drag from your commands are actually going to land right here. Your program is what's going to control what goes on down here with Daisy. So let's go ahead and begin. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of throw a couple of commands in just to get an idea of what it is that they do. Like I don't think the last time we saw roll. I'm going to go ahead and put that one in. I'll just drag that here. And then let's see. I know that we saw shrink and grow. I don't think we saw turn. Let me put turn in there. In fact, I'll put it in there twice. And what we'll do now is, now that we've got roll, turn, and turn, we'll go ahead and play and see what Daisy does. So I'll press the play button right here, and let's see what happens. So she did a roll, and then she did two turns. It was pretty quick. I'll play it again. Watch, watch Daisy, and you'll see it happen. It's pretty quick. A roll, and a turn, and a turn. So I think the turn, if we were to take one of those out, she would do a roll, and then she'd be turning the other way. Let me press play, and we'll take a look. Yeah, she just turns around, she faces the other way. Let me hit play again, that'll face her again the other way. Take that out. Press play. No commands. She's facing the other way. I don't want her to do that. I guess that's what she's going to be doing, though. We'll have to deal with that. Let's actually take it back to the menu, and I'll hit free play mode just to reset it. Now I know that we're in good shape. So that gives you an idea of what some of the new ones are. So here, let's go ahead and see if we can, we'll do a repeat five times. Now what the repeat five times is, is that's actually a loop. That means it's going to do what you put in this cloud right here five times. And we covered that in the last video. So if we want Daisy to move forward five times, we would simply put that move in the repeat five cloud. And that means we know that Daisy is going to move forward five times. Now, after Daisy moves forward five times, I want to use that nifty new turn that we saw. So we'll go ahead and put that in, and that'll come in under the repeat five. Now, after she turns, I want her to walk all the way back. So what we'll do is I'll scroll up here, I'll grab another repeat five, and I'll put that here. That brings me another repeat five cloud where I'll put the move in. So what we've got is if we've got move five times forward and then turn and then move five times forward again so ideally down here in the stage we want to see daisy move forward five times turn and then move back to where she started so let's press the play button and see if that's what daisy does she's moving forward and once she hits five times she should stop and turn and then move forward five times again. And that's what we're seeing. That's terrific. So when you can put together a program and you can kind of predict exactly what's going to go on as you're putting it together, it's really good stuff. That's what you want to see. So let's do something else. I'm just going to reset the stage by going back to the menu. I'm going to go into free play mode again. And there's some of the things that I wanted to see if they were actually possible was embedding. Let's see if we can understand whether or not we can embed commands. In programming, typically you can do this, but you may not be able to do this in all of these apps that we're looking at that kind of teach you the fundamentals of programming. But what I want to do is I want to use when. When is an event. So for moms and dads and teachers who are watching this, when represents sort of the uh, event-based programming concepts that kids are going to encounter when they start to learn how to uh, write software for computers or software for mobile apps, for example. What we want to do is we want to change this when to a touch. So the event that we're programming for is 
when we actually touch the screen. And when we touch, we're going to execute the commands that are all in this little cloud right here. So let's go ahead and put some stuff in there. But first, I want to see if we can embed some of these concepts below when. So I'm wondering if I do a when touch, can I put a repeat five in this cloud? I don't know that I can. I'm going to try it. It looks like I can. That's terrific. So what we'll do is we'll say when we touch repeat five grow. So if you look at what I've got here in the program section, I'm saying when we touch the screen, go ahead and five times grow. That means when I touch, we should see Daisy here in the stage grow really big. But I want to do something else. I want to say also when we shake, so I'll leave this alone. I'm not going to change this to anything. This stays as shake. And then in this when cloud, I'm going to say repeat five times. And then in the repeat five cloud, I'm going to say shrink. So what we've got is we've programmed for two events. We've programmed for a touch event and we've programmed for a shake event. Let's go ahead and press play and see if this works. I'll press play now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the screen. I'll touch the screen anywhere. I'll go ahead and touch under Daisy's feet. Oh, look at that. She's growing. She's growing five times. And that was kind of unusual looking because now it looks like she's shrinking. It leads me to believe that it's somehow detecting a shake in there. Let me stop that and try again. I'm going to touch. No, it's it's getting it's getting that shrink in there too, isn't it? Because when it's all done with the grow, it shrinks all the way down. And that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and see if we can troubleshoot this. I'm going to take this out. Oh, look what I did. Ah, I didn't even catch that. So what I thought I was doing was I thought that I was embedding the repeat five shrink under the new when shake, but that's not what I was doing at all. Let me take that out. Let's try this again. So I may not be able to do this, so I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to say when shake repeat five shrink. So if you look at this, it looks like I've got it right. Hopefully I've got it right this time. I certainly did not have it right the last time. Let's have a look. I'm going to press play and we'll see if this works. I press the play button and I touch Daisy under her feet. No, it doesn't look like it's working. Yeah, it looks like it's fighting there, huh? So let me go ahead and take out the when. Yeah, and that's what's happening. The shrink is actually following right under the grow in the main repeat five. Let me try this again. I don't want to spend too much time on this because it just could be a, it could, it's a couple of possibilities here. It could be that I'm just not getting it right but it could also be that it's probably not set up to do something like this. Because when I drag it over here, it looks like the shrink is actually associated to the repeat five that's on my second when event. That's how it looks. But when I press play, let's see if that's how it actually happens. So I'll touch again, Daisy under the feet. Oh, oh, that looks good. Oh, but no, now she shrinks. Yeah, that's not what we want. Let me touch again grows and then shrinks. Yeah. So, and when I look at the, what's in the program, it looks like it's all set up, right? Now let me shake it and see if that does anything. Yeah. When I shake it, she goes ahead and she shrinks. So it's very possible that what we could have uncovered here is an actual bug in the program. It's either a bug in the program or I've got something I'm, I'm slipping with my fingers or I'm not setting it, setting it up right. Either way, it doesn't look like that works, but that's good to know. And that's one of the things that you'll actually encounter. When you're learning how to code, you'll, you'll start to understand some of the limitations of the programming software that you're using. You may also learn some of the limitations of the actual programming language or the code that you're using. Sometimes there may be something that you can't do. And I think we saw an example of that here. 
So you have an idea, I think, of what, what you can do in free play mode, and I definitely encourage that you take this app and try some things out on your own. Do some experimentation. Do some things that maybe seem like they might be kind of difficult or hard, like we did here. I think we had an idea of what we thought might work and it didn't, and that's okay. You encounter that sometimes. So play with this program and see what you can come up with. And then check back soon because we're going to have more apps that are going to teach you a lot more about the fundamentals and basics of coding in addition to what you saw here today. So thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please go ahead and like us. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. We've got plenty to talk about. Thanks for watching us, and we'll talk to you again real soon.